Hello, I'm Jim King, National Executive Director for AMVETS. I want to welcome you to your headquarters. I'm glad that you've decided to invest some time and learn more about the AMVETS organization. We're located in a beautiful building in Lanham, Maryland. We've been here since December of 1980. We have a beautiful memorial carillon outside the building. This carillon is dedicated to the memory of all deceased veterans who have served our country. We also have a memorial grove for deceased past national commanders and for our deceased auxiliary past national presidents. Our conference room has likenesses of all our past national commanders and ladies auxiliary past national presidents on the wall, along with memorabilia from AMVETS history. We also have on display here the state flags of every state in the Union, which reminds us that we're here to serve all the veterans all across the country. Our Arizona Memorial Room is dedicated to the memory of the more than 1,100 Marines and sailors who went down with that ship on December the 7th, 1941. Since AMVETS was originally established by a group of World War II veterans, we have always felt close ties to the USS Arizona, and indeed to all of those who were serving in Hawaii on December the 7th, 1941. On the back wall of the Arizona Memorial Room, you will see a picture of the USS Arizona Memorial, which is located in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. AMVETS had a very important role in the establishment of this memorial. In 1959, as the memorial was being built, it became apparent that they were $250,000 short in funding. Appropriation for this money was at a stalemate in Congress, and Harold Burke, who was then National Commander of AMVETS, visited with President Dwight Eisenhower, urging him to support the legislation to provide these funds. The president said he was in favor of, of the memorial, but he did not know where the funds would come from. And then Commander Burke explained to the president that there were 1,100 souls entombed in that memorial battleship and that the Veterans Administration would ordinarily be paying a $250 burial allowance for each of them. If that burial allowance were put toward funding the memorial, they would have more than the $250,000 required. The President agreed, Congress appropriated the money, and the memorial came about. AMVETS has also dedicated a carillon at this memorial. And in the one wall of the Arizona Memorial is inscribed the names of all Marines and sailors who are there entombed. This wall was provided by AMVETS by individual donations from AMVETS and auxiliary members throughout the country. You'll also notice a silver helmet which was presented to all the crew members who are entombed in the USS Arizona. The silver helmet is AMVETS highest award. We present these annually to people who have shown themselves to be outstanding in the areas of defense, Americanism, congressional awards, civil servants, and of course, the AMVET of the year. We also have a chapel. It is multi-denominational. Many of our visitors like to spend some time in the chapel praying or just remembering friends or loved ones who are now deceased who have served our country. We have developed this program to assist you in better understanding the AMVETS organization. For many years, we've had national officers and, and members asking for this type of training to be available. We hope that this will fulfill the needs and you will find it informative. The modules are topic specific and may be viewed individually or at one time as may be used for a training session. The program is designed to provide you with a comprehensive overview to highlight specific areas of interest, and to identify resources that are available to you, people, manuals, and of course, our worldwide website. If you are using this as part of a group training exercise, we suggest that you first print the facilitator's guide, the associated hard copies of the specific PowerPoints, and the glossary of acronyms. We encourage you to make use of a facilitator at the conclusion of each module. The facilitator can review the key points and lead any discussion that may develop. Discussing the subject matter is an excellent way to reinforce the learning process. We'll start with the administrative department, which I supervise, 
as well as oversee the activities of six department directors and 20 support staff. We provide administrative support for the National Commander and our national officers. We arrange for their travel, coordinate their visits to various departments and posts, and make sure that we can get in contact with them at any time as necessary. The revalidation process for departments and posts is carried for by the administrative department. We also handle personnel matters, insurance and legal issues. We provide planning for our national conventions and our national executive committee meetings, including the banquets. We also ensure that all posts and departments adhere to the national constitution and bylaws. We maintain relationships with the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Department of Labor, as well as the other veteran service organizations throughout the country. Answers for all your questions are readily available. The primary sources are your post or your department, the AMVETS website, www.amvets.org, the American Veteran Magazine, the AMVETS electronic reference CD. We have brochures and manuals available. And you can always call headquarters. We have a toll free number, 877 7 AMVETS. That's 877 726 8387. Quartermaster's office can be reached at 800 454 3254. As you go through the other modules, I'm sure you'll find that many of your questions are answered, whether it be about communications, finance, legislation, membership, programs, or service. If you need more information, feel free to contact me or my support staff. I thank you for your time, and to all you Marines out there, Semper Fi.